How's everybody doing? It's Joe here from Wubigast, and today we're going to be taking a look at, at Gyarados. Now, the reason we're taking a look at Gyarados is because it recently did well at Sheffield Regionals. Um, Eddie Haffey, French player, of course, piloted it to top... It was second place, of course, uh, at Sheffield Regionals, only losing to Decidueye by Vileplume in the finals, which, as you can probably assume, is an auto-loss, given that, you know, you've got 10 HP Magikarps lying around on the bench. Um, but the reason I want to talk about it, it was actually I wanted to do a video on this, before Sheffield, because it was something I was testing out for Elite Challenge. Uh, I had a ton of fun with it, and it really sort of showed to me that the deck is incredibly strong, like really powerful. So I decided, all right, I'm going to give this a go myself. Um, and of course, Medi just sort of proved that point a bit more, coming second out of regionals with it, when people were thinking, still thinking, that things like Decidueye and Espeon GX and Umbreon GX were going to be everywhere. Things that can potentially cause this deck a lot of problems. Um, it's amazing that he still managed to do so well with it, despite those things being present. But basically, I think this is an incredibly strong deck. If you listen to my tournament report, I think it's an incredibly underrated deck. Uh, this, this thing can do crazy stuff. If you are not prepared for this, like, yes, you can tech for this with, like, one spin, though. But if you don't, and if you're not prepared for this deck, it's going to eat you alive. It is incredibly powerful when it wants to be. So, anyway, I'll go through the list. Uh, I had my own list of this, which I will show off in a second. The, I, this is not Medi's exact list. I don't know what his exact list is. This is just sort of some changes and concessions I made uh, to my own list after playing against him in the tournament and after seeing him uh, play his list on stream. There were a few things I think, obviously, they did really well. So I'd like to go through those real quick. So first of all, anyway, we'll just go for the 4-4 four, four line of Gyarados. Full, realita full, realitation, full retaliation is going to be the attack we're using in this game. Uh, does 30 more damage for each counter on each of our bench Magikarps. So we use Team Magma's Secret Base, which is whenever we wench Pokemon, we have to put two damage counters on it, and we put down Magikarps, so we put two damage counters on a Magikarp every time we bench one. Uh, with one Magikarp in play, you're doing 90, with two, you're doing 150, and with three, you're hitting for 210 damage, which is an insane number. Plus whatever kind of damage Magma Base racked up on your opponent's side of the field as well, this can start hitting crazy numbers, no problem at all. So that's why it's kind of an archetype that you have to look at, is that we have this incredible attack for a really affordable cost, it's a non-EX, it's got solid amount of HP, 110 after you factor in that it's probably going to be Magma Base itself. The biggest downside to this deck is having your 30 HP Magikarps on the bench, which turn into 10 HP Magikarps on the bench. So if your opponent has any kind of like sniping or damage placing or damage moving kind of effects, they're going to wipe you out pretty easily. So things like the Sidueye that can pick off Magikarps on the bench is going to be a real tough matchup, especially because they have 240 HP as well and four stadiums, meaning it's going to be really hard to actually KO one of them in one hit. So you need to, so matchups like that can be difficult, but think about the matchups that you do actually do well in. Look at, like, Darkrai. That's an incredibly powerful deck, and it's also a deck that you're going to be consistently one-shotting them. They have 220 HP with a Fury Belt, I know, but we have ways around that, like Magma Base and like Professor Kukui, which I'll get onto in a minute. But when you're coming up against decks like this, which is like a top-tier archetype, you're going to floor that. You come up against, um... What's that thing called? Volcanion. Like, no question, you're hitting for weakness and everything. You're going to floor that. Any, like, major archetype that doesn't have some way of damaging the bench or spreading damage around, is going to really struggle against Gyarados, because there really aren't a lot of things that can deal with the constant stream of this. Uh, especially when the deck, once it gets going, I think is pretty consistent as well. So let's just take a look at what else we're playing in the list. i got a 1-1 Octillery line. Um, actually, you know what, I'll come back to this, I'll start with the Shaman. So he ran one Shaman, I think he ran one Shaman, it might have been two, but we'll go with one for now. Again, this is sort of my own interpretation of it, based on the ideas I think I saw from him. Um, Shaman's really cool, because obviously you draw extra cards with it, but 2 seems to be... 2 is what I was at least running anyway, because I didn't like the Octillery necessarily, and I had one Absol in the deck. Uh, instead, we'll get to that. Like, one thing people play to sort of fix some numbers, like hitting 220 on a Darkrai, is Meowstic EX, so that they can use the Shadow Warrior ability to start moving damage counters to uh, from your side of the board to your opponent's side, and then you can start using Shadow Warrior to get that extra 10 to start hitting 180 HP Pokemon with Fury Belts, and that's one way you can do it. Uh, I personally didn't like this at all. One card I found to be significantly better was Absol. This just made way more sense to me, because usually the damage on our side of the board wasn't necessarily something we wanted to move. Um, and also, with Meowstic having to be in the active spot, I had to run more switching cards. Absol's Cursed Eye was just a really simple bench and move. Also, it's a non-EX, and if you have to promote something and in the hopes that it doesn't get KO'd, Absol's what you go to. 
So, and yeah, my headphones are still getting caught up with my hair. I need to fix both those things. But yeah, so that's, I don't know. I found this one to be a much better damage modifier. But here's the thing. Mediopted for a 1-1 auxiliary line. This makes so much sense for a few reasons. And I didn't actually even bother testing auxiliary. I kind of wrote it off way too quickly, I think. But this makes way more sense to me because, first of all, after like the first two or three turns with this deck, your dive balls start coming dead because you've got all your magic cards on the board, you've got your Gyarados in play, and what you're looking for instead of like ball search cards is like Team Magma secret bases, um, buddy buddy rescue, things like these to sort of recover from a bad board position as opposed to search things out of your deck. Usually like after the first couple of turns, you don't care about what's in your deck and you're just looking for things in your discard pile. Uh, and that's where puzzles of the times and things like that come in. But so what I'm saying is your balls sort of become dead. So from that point on, like this gives you like extra targets to search with dive ball. So like you don't like a lot of the time I was playing dive ball, searching my deck and just failing it, just so I'd get it out there and just so I'd be more end proof. Uh, this is like a way better idea because you just get this into play and then you're end proof anyway. Um, so yeah, I really like the auxiliary. It makes sense, especially as a one one line. I wouldn't go any higher than that. I don't know if he did. I think he just stuck to one one. Uh, Abyssal Hand, of course, lets you draw into a 5, so it improves you. Um, Orangaru is an option too, I guess, but this is, like, probably better. When you're running 4 Dive Ball, you should be able to get away with this instead. So, yeah, we go with that. The other thing it does is my supporter for the turn, with without Auxiliary, I found, like, your supporter for the turn basically had to be either Sigmore or Teammates, because you needed a lot of things in your hand to recover from. So I could like teammates for a DCE and a buddy buddy rescue, and there we go, that's another Gyarados gun. Or teammates for double puzzle of time and get that. Or Sycamore, because I just needed a ton of other stuff. But it meant that I was rarely ever playing N and Lazant. It meant I had no room for tech supporters like Kukui. It meant I had no room for Hex Maniacs, Rangers, anything like that. So if you want to play these, I think Auxiliary gives you an option, because you can Abyssal Hand and potentially draw into the things you need. And then you're able to use your supporter for the turn on more trivial things like Kukui giving you a damage boost, which personally I couldn't really afford in my last list that didn't run, run auxiliary. So it makes sense because it gives you more room to run more techie things like this. Um, you're probably going to be playing Lazand a good bit more as well, and as well as something you can play a bit more now. I like it in that sense a lot. So, And there's not enough Garbodor that means I wouldn't want to play it. So 1-1 uh, one, one line I think is fine. So that's the whole Pokemon line. I think it's just six bo basic Pokemon. Uh, there, may, maybe there should be another one in there, but for now it's six. Let's just go with that. Uh, you know what? Actually, no, I was gonna put in a second Jamin just because I'm afraid of Mulligans, but screw it. We'll be we'll be fine. This is probably a really terrible idea, but we'll be fine. Anyway, on to the rest of the deck. Buddy Buddy Rescue is your best friend. I would run eight of these instead of Puzzle of Time if I could. Honestly, I love this thing. Uh, it just puts Pokemon for your discard pile in your hand, so your Gyarados gets knocked out. You take the Magic Art back. You put it straight back onto your bench, it activates my Magma Secret Base. You can't use Revive because Revive puts it straight onto your bench and it bypasses the hand, which means Magma Base does not activate. Any other really crazy things in this deck we need to point out? The only other thing is Lucky Helmet. Lucky Helmet is great because the worst thing that can happen to you with this deck is because you need to recover so many things each turn. If your opponent ends you to a low hand size, you're not going to be able to do that later on in the game and you're just going to be stuck with a board of 10 HP Magic Arps and then your opponent's going to win from there. Lucky Helmet allows you to slap it on a Gyarados, slap it on a Magic Arp on the bench to, pr to protect yourself in multiple avenues. And from there, you can actually just... Like, when your opponent hits into you, you draw more cards. And this completely end proofs you on top of the Auxiliary. Like, there's no way you're being ended into a bad hand with this deck. So, and with the Theta Double, you're actually able to attach two Lucky Helmets if you want. So they can potentially end you to one late game. Uh, they hit into a Gyarados, you draw four cards, play a few of them down, then draw up the five again with Octillery. You haven't even played a supporter by this point. Like, that's crazy powerful right now. So that's why the Lucky Helmets are good. And with Town Map, you're always going to be hitting the Octillery too. It's super important to play this because if any of your Magic Arps are prize, you need to know about it, you need to deal with it immediately. Puzzle of Time is essential because of how much recovery you need to do, because basically, sometimes, you know, you get knocked out, you need a Gyarados, you need a DCE, you need another Magic Arp, probably a Magma Base if they bounced it. And like, with all these things that you need to get, you know, recovering from the discard pile is so important. The puzzle of the time makes sense, especially when we're playing two copies of teammates. We play two because it's easily the best supporter in the deck, and like I said, because you just need so many things. Uh, so yeah, we'll go with that. One thing he played that was really interesting was Escape Rope. I did not have the room for this in my own list. Uh, I feel like this is more of a luxury than anything else, but it means you can get away with one Escape Rope, one Flowstone, that's what I've gone to at least. 
I think one flow zone is fine. You might think there's auxiliary here. Is anyone really going to be playing Lazan to stall out your auxiliary? Probably not. If they are, they're not in a great position. You probably have time to afford your attach retreat. If you're really stuck, you can puzzle the time back the escape rope. I don't think this is a big threat that you need to be worried about, so I wouldn't. I think one flow zone is fine. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. As well, one Kukui will just. It fixes some math. 210 is not good enough to kill a Dark Rider with a Fury Belt, and if Magma Base didn't get the extra damage, Kukui will, uh, in terms of killing Decidueyes. Magma Base plus 210 is 230, plus the Kukui is 250. So now you're killing Incineroar, or not Incineroar, well, you're killing that anyway. Uh, now you're killing Solgaleo GX, now you're killing Decidueye GX, Pre Marina GX, if that ever comes up for some reason. Uh, and of course, like I was mentioning, with the Auxiliary, you now have the room to do this. So that's really the whole deck. I guess I'm just going to hop into some games and play it out. And that's not how he spells his name, so I need to fix that. Yeah, it's all good. No, get better sleeves first. Yeah, let's go Kyogre. I always go with Sylvie one ones. Let's go with the Kyogre ones. So, anyway, Gyarados actually became, like, a really fun deck for me to play. It's sort of, it's really reminiscent of Night March. Uh, it's le at least it's the closest thing I think we've got to it that isn't Basimian. Basimian feels like Night March a lot. This feels like a more uh, measured Night March. Because the fact that you have to evolve is a bit different. But Alright, so Grass and Metal. That's probably Solgaleo Lorantis. I think I actually did play a Solgaleo Lorantis in uh, the LC I played Gyarados in. Poison Barb was so good against this deck. But then again, I wasn't playing Octillery. Uh, I did play one Poison Barb just for... I all want to say it's a good card in the deck. It was just there for a laugh. Because I had 59 cards, I didn't know what else, to, what else to put in, and I just decided, nah, screw it. Let's go for one Poison Barb, and it actually ended up fixing a ton of math against Logaleo, so. Well, we have Kukui this time, which is, you know, I admit, strictly better. Alright, here come the Mulligans. Again, there's probably supposed to be more basic Pokemon in this deck, but I think it's fine, right? Three mul- oh, gee, oh dear. Like, even if, like, more, like... I think my list played seven. That's only one more. This is, you know, ridiculous by any standards, though. How many has this been? Like, hey, there we go. All right, how many mulligans did he get? And to give Solgaleo Lorantis this many mulligans as well is not a good idea at all. Let's see, how many was that? Like six? I'm gonna go with six. I think it was six. Let's see if he wants to even take them. It doesn't look like he's doing much here. So again, strategy in this game is gonna be taking out the Solgaleos. The Lorantis isn't much of an issue if we can get a Magikarp down like before we play Magma Base, because then we have 130 HP and Lorantis can't actually do the 120 to kill it. So if we can get that going, that's all right. Thankfully, we're weak to Lightning, not weak to uh, Grass. So it becomes more difficult for them to take KOs. Uh, they can Flare Supply to kill Magikarps, but look, people in Oblivion Wing to kill Magikarps, you expect your Magikarps to die. It's not a huge issue. This poet person is just being clearly overwhelmed by the amount of mulligans they've been given. So we just, you know, I guess sit here for a little while. Hey, there we go. All right. I missed how many that was, but it looked like a bounce. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this hand. Okay, it's a Taurus. So maybe it's not Solgaleo Lorantis. Oh, you know what? Uh, it's probably just Sidui, and the metal's just Jirachi. If this is rarely, I'm just going to scoop. Yeah, it's oddish, at least. All right, if it's Lorantis, Vile Bloom is not an issue. But if this player is good, then it shouldn't be Lorantis Vileplume, because we're not in Expanded. I'll wait. In the moment I see your rail, I'm just going to scoop and go to the next game. There's a lot of Decidueye on the ladder. Thanks, Conchalo, for, you know, popularizing the deck. Thanks, John Kettler, for making it in the first place. Because now you can't play Gyarados anywhere, and this is one of the biggest issues with it. If it wasn't for Decidueye doing well... Uh, and people getting a lot of it, giving it a lot of attention. I'd be like, yeah, play Gyarados whenever. But this is, it, it turns into a good like League Challenge, League Cup deck, because you know if you read the meta and you know no one in your area is going to play this. Oh, yeah, we're going, we're leaving. Like I'm not hanging around for that. It's not going to make for entertaining viewing for you guys. Let's just keep going. All right, not 
Not the Sijiwai. That's good. What the hell is lightning in the current format? What the hell could that be? It's like Raichu, but... Alright, Fury Belts. This is probably like Magnazone, Electrode. Maybe. I can't think of anything lightning and significant. It's okay, Jolteon. It's not just Jolteon Tauros, though, is it? Here come the mulligans again, by the way. Come on, basic. Hey, we got one. Cool. All right. That's fine. As long as they don't flip over Latios, we're in a good sp in a good position. All right, it is Raikou Electrode. That's fine. Um, issues that could arise in this matchup? Nothing really. I mean, 210 is still going to be killing this thing. No problem. We just got to be careful to not accidentally click on Rough Seas ourselves. So, do I play Magma Base before I get this Magikarp down? Like, he evolves. He's probably going to kill this. Is 150 good enough to kill these things? No. Well, I'll die fall for Magikarp anyway. We'll find out how many... Okay, we only have one prized. Because we have one prized, I don't think I want to necessarily risk. Yeah, we'll take one. They don't have any sniping attacks in this deck, do they? They're, like, there's nothing I'm missing. Ah, they probably don't. Let's just go for the Magma Base. I'm doing this just because I don't want to risk it. Um... We know he plays Enhanced Hammer. That's something I want to be concerned about, but, you know. Just go with it. I mean, I have to attach anyway, because I'm sick of mooring. Good lucky helmet the active, and then if he brings this one up, it's beneficial either way. Probably going to get out another Magic Arb here. We've got teammates in hand, so we're good for next turn. Yeah, we'll do that. I think it's important to get your magic arps down as quickly as you can, at least. Um, well, Lucky Helmet the active, in the hopes of it giving us something good. We do play four Lucky Helmet. I think you can go down to two, but if you have the room, four is fine. Like four, it will make your like your end proof against everything, even if they no, regardless of what they run. I uh, would like town map there before he got the electrode going, but what can you do? I think I'll be a little amazed if he does actually go for the Electrode this turn. Yeah, he's going to go for the Swift KO. Alright. That's fine. Of course, Swift being the first attack. 160 is an easy number for us to hit. With only 3 Magikarp, we only hit 150 though, so we might have to... We're going to struggle a bit there, and this is where the Poison Barb would be great. Alright, that's fine. We got Escape Rope, so we can take a KO on whatever. This thing has like 140. Okay. Well, we'll evolve the active because we're going to be attacking here. Let's think. Teammates for double puzzle could get me double colorless energy and a buddy buddy rescue. That puts me on 150. I then escape rope and whatever he promotes I end up killing. And he can't retaliate with another kill on the Jolteon. Or I get teammates for just double colorless energy. I've got the body body in hand, and I get town map, and then I'm able to take the last magic arp. I like that a lot better. So let's grab DCE and town map, and then we just body body this 150. We lose, we escape rope. Ah, I'm an idiot. I can't escape rope. Ah, oh, why did I evolve this magic arp? Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. I'm such an idiot. I had it all figured out. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Do I have to do this now? The humiliation, the humiliation. But that would have been such a good idea if I wasn't an idiot and just evolved that Gyarados straight off the bat.
Don't think he has anything. Nope. So obviously we grab our Magikarp. Gonna escape rope. He's got no supporters in hand, at least, that we know of, so this should set him back somewhat. Probably should have escape rope before I buddy buddied as well. Uh, my sequencing is all off, but what can you do? I could shame it up to try and hit this town map. Do I think that's worth it? Um, probably. If he has Lizond, I'd rather him take the Shaman anyway, so. Alright. Not fantastic, but it's workable. I could have Sky returned the Voltorb as well, could I have? No, I couldn't have out of HP. Yeah, full ret. Okay, I played that turn super wrong, but I told... Do as I say, not as I do, you know? Alright, one puzzle at a time is good. Oh, we're powering up that mad, Bull GX. Alright, cool. And he gets another gives us another prize. 20, 40, 60, 110. Yeah, he's gonna get the KO. Of course we're weak to lightning. But I think we can retaliate fairly well here at 140. Yeah, we can get the KO. No worries. No worries. It's going to be a VS Seeker for teammates, probably for Gyarados and DCE, and then... No, I want to, I want to get Tan Map with his teammates. But I'm going to transmail in case I hit it first. I got to get the puzzle of time. But I think i got to start worrying about ends at this point, so I'm going to take Lucky Helmet. Again, please don't kill me in the comment section if I'm playing this completely wrong. So the Buddy Buddy's going to be Magikarp. The teammates... is going to be one puzzle at a time. And town map. And then we double puzzle for Gyarados and DCE. Yep. Yep. Alright. Super awkward ways of doing this. I'm playing really terribly tonight. <laughs> One puzzle at a time in town map. But, hey, whatever. We're still in the lead. So what can you do? Play that double puzzle. For Gyarados. And DCE. Uh, do I want to evolve the one with the float stone? You can come with this and take the KO, so I'm going to go for no. Yeah, we'll hold the one with the flow stone. Why not? And then we'll buddy buddy rescue. He'll get back probably a Voltorb. Well, he has to get back a Voltorb. Then we grab back Magikarp. Town map. Okay, there we go. Cool. Magma base is in play, double check that. We're hitting for 150. Yep, it is just if it has a lightning on it. I'm going to keep reading this because if it's for every lightning on it, yeah, it's if it has any. Retreat. I could play special charge now. I might honestly, just so it's like, because special charge is a dead card going into the next few turns, but DC isn't, so we'll go for that. And full retaliation for the KO. Not bad. And let's see if he plays DCE or not. Take that. Can he Wally? <laughs> okay, well, he's got Max Elixir. It's weird. Don't know why he's doing that. Like, he can't. Mad Bull GX. For, he can Mad Bull GX for the KO. I, can he? No, we can't. It's only 60. Alright, wow. Some hand. Um, yeah, so we've got teammates next turn, so... <laughs> we're not worried. We're not worried. Enhanced Stammer might hurt us a bit, but I think there's a Sycamore in the discard file. Yeah, there is. 
So even if he goes at the E hammer, we just take him more away. So. Gets another Raikou out. We don't have to worry about it right now. I feel like he almost should have left the Tauros and the... the it depends on how many switching cards he runs, because I feel like he should have just tried to keep powering up this Jolteon. And Swift is going to hit us for weakness. Oh, it's not. It doesn't apply weakness. Okay. I guess it won't hit us for weakness. Like, he can retreat and he can horn attack for 70. He can rage. Yeah. Well, he's got the Parallel City down. That's fine. Look at our counter stadiums. We got them all here. Almost tempted to Lazond up the Voltorb next turn. Yeah, he should have really just not attacked at all, I don't think, because now he's activating the Lucky Helmet, and that's going to be big for us. Okay, well, oh, whoa, -ho -ho, almost a massive misplay there. Okay, well, we'll get that down. Um, yeah, I'll do this. Like, if we do this, then he ends us. Like, I can take the KO on this now, or I can take the KO on the Vault Orb. Make sure we can't get up another attacker. Either way, I think we're fine. Like, I might stick more away this, because most of these are cards we don't want to draw into later. Uh, it's also, I don't want to get into one. I'd rather just get into two, obviously. And so that's part of it. Just make sure I am getting the KO here, because the 20 damage takes him down to 190, or 200, and we're doing 210. Yeah, so we are getting the KO. I go on, I'll say more. We got lucky helmet. We don't need to worry about N. All right, with Shaman out of the deck, uh, it's a good time to probably get rid of our Ultra Balls. I'll just take Gyarados a hand. People do cut down to three Gyarados. I think it's way too risky. I much prefer the 4 Gyarados, it makes me more sense to me. I could attach this DCE, but we know he plays Enhanced Hammer. I would love to attach this DCE right now, but I can't. The Lucky Helmet should really help us out here. And we'll take one Dive Ball and probably Ultra Ball, because they're both out to Gyarados. Although, maybe I should have taken a Magma Base there. Yeah, I should have taken Magma Base. Because we can only hit for 150 now. But we got Kukui. Well, we'll be fine. I'm like, I mean, look, I'm making like an incredible amount of misplays. But we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, look, look at that. Look at that. It's great. Who needs Octillery, eh? Who needs Octillery? We win. Uh, unless you can counter this stadium, we win. Is Escape Rope in the discard pile? Yeah, it is. Puzzle of Time. That's what we got. Three? Yeah. Yeah, I can see why he played Escape Rope now. But with two cards in hand, I can't see him countering this, unless that's a Shaman. Oh, there you go. Don't forget, we will get hit. And we are quite significantly higher up. Okay, yeah, we're fine. We win. Oh. <laughs> Lucky Helmet, thank you. Oh, that's, that's gorgeous. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Oh my god. We don't even need the teammates. It's just humiliation at this point. Yeah, he's got 200 HP with the Fury Belt, so... Simple stuff. We'll just... Our misplays were not punished, so... Look, who needs teammates, right? I'll take... Carp. That's the other thing about a 1-1 Auxiliary, is you can get away with it when you run, uh... When you run... 4 Buddy Buddy Rescue. Yeah, boy. Alright, that was a ma matchup, like... A match riddled with misplays. But... You can see how consistently we're able to hit for those numbers. Um... What time is it there? I don't really have time for one more, but sure, I'll try a quick game. Why not? And I'll try not to massively misplay in it. I'm more conscious of misplays when I'm on camera. Like, when I'm just playing casually with friends, I swear, I'm like, I'm, I'm a god. 
I know none of you will believe me, but... Alright, Volcanion. This should be straightforward. Unless we draw dead and he just goes home with the baby Volcanion. But, you know, hopefully that won't happen. Alright, we go first. Cool. How many mulligans this time? Yes. Okay, he's playing Scorched Earth. That's, like, really the only thing I need to check. And for catchers as well, I suppose. Not the nicest hand you'll ever see, but... We have Sycamore, so it could be worse. And Lucky Helmet, which is always nice. Cool sleeves, though. Oh, come on. Alright. Welp. Guess I won't be needing DZE. Special charge is in here for a reason. Alright, no Magma Base yet. One of these has to be benched, uh, which is fine because we hit for weakness on everything, so I don't need to worry too much about finding the Magma Base um, super early. So I'm going to Dive Ball for... See, I don't know how we played this deck. Should I get the Remorade early game or what? I could keep digging with Shaman here. Let's not forget that. I do have that option. But I think the only way I lose this game is if I play Shaman, so... Do you know what? I've got another Magic Arp in hand anyway. Let's start getting a bit greedy here. Let's take the Remoraid. Yeah, I think it's safe enough to do that right now. That'll train his mail. We do hit base. I'm tempted to not even play it necessarily. But I could Ultra Ball for Shame and then drop that and then. Ugh. There's a few things I can do here. See, because I don't like digging too much early game with this thing, so. Do you know what? Yeah. This will be fine. I want to drop the base just to get some damage counters on. Nah, that's probably a terrible idea as well. I'm really tired today. I think I should have played that then played the base. Or held the base completely. But I, sh I shouldn't have done that. But I know what I'm supposed to do, and that's the point. Alright, so. With a Fury Belt, we only need one on the bench now. Because he's got this. Wait, do we? 220, 210? Nah. Nah, we don't. Uh, like, two on the bench will be safe enough. One on the bench should get us KOs if they don't have Fury Belts on them, and that one's already being Flowstone, so we should be fine. Wow, okay. Not a whole lot going on that turn. Alright, so. This puts us in a great position, obviously. We're going to Ultra Ball. We're not going to end. God, no, we're not going to end. Um, get rid of base and end. This is going to be a Shaman. Because I got a lot of things I want to get. Yeah, I'll hold the puzzle, obviously. Alright, well, there's Gyarados. So we find like one magic harp, we get this. Alright, sweet. Puzzle of time. Um, what am I getting back? Well, magic harp. Obviously. Magic harp and dive ball for another magic harp could be fun. Yeah, because I need another magic harp on the bench, obviously. So. Yeah, why not? We'll get it. No, Magic Carbon Dive Ball for Octillery, actually. That's good. That's good. Now we're talking. I've got Special Charge for these. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. I almost want to spread out my Lucky Helmets. So that's fine. Get Octillery. Will Abyssal Hand. There's another Dive Ball. There's another Magic Arp. And actually, because I think there's already one Carp in the, the one Gyarados in the bin. 
Do we have teammates in there? No. I kind of don't want to sycamore this away. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. That's like the key word of the day is we'll be fine. So 300 damage. <laughs> And like if his hand is as bad as he's leading us to believe, we'll be fine. There, there we get, there it is again. Okay, we got flowstone. That's grand. Alrighty, and there's the easiest game you will ever see played with Magikarp. But you know, sequencing is important. Uh, I just tried to describe a lot of my thought process as opposed to actually, you know, executing it well. Uh, and it's good that it's a quick game because I actually don't have time to hang around for more than that. And hey, we get our Fates Collide booster pack, and wait for it, our wonderful. Promo Thunderous. Hell yeah. Pro tip as well for you guys who stayed around to the end. Uh, probably going to be streaming next Wednesday. Same time as always, which will be 7 till 9 p.m. over on twitch.tv slash Woobercast. I'll probably be playing some Handoom. Probably be playing some... Uh, I want to mess around with Lorantis a bit. I've got a few variants in my head that I want to mess around with. Like, Lorantis Sogaleo is, like, super interesting. And obviously you can read the title of this deck. Um, so yeah, anyway. Uh, that's Gyarados. I think it's in a really great... I think it's an incredible deck, and I think it needs to be taken seriously because of the sheer numbers this thing can hit, but at the same time, you got to watch every decision way. And Giratina is an issue as well, but I think it's one of the few decks that can run one copy of Pokemon Ranger and actually have an out to get around Giratina. Uh, so anyway, that's going to be it from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.